Hey everyone, and welcome to the tutorial series for the NPC Manager system. Today, we're going to take a look at how to use a custom NPC class with the system. This is basically uh, the use case where you have an NPC class that you absolutely have to use and you have to transfer all of the code and components from my MPC manager base class to yours. And that is the use case if you're using, you know, several templates like complete RPG, for example, or anything uh, similar where they already have an MPC class defined and you want to add the behavior to that class. So this tutorial is going to be a little bit more involved and we're going to go step by step on how to do everything. Uh, look at the goals here. We're going to use a custom NPC class that already exists, and we're going to basically transfer the functionality from my own base class. We're also going to create a, a new uh, station that is going to use a custom animation, and then we're going to retarget one of the default animations to this custom skeleton to create another station. So we're going to cover a lot of use cases here. Um, and to that end, I've actually created a guide and I'm going to be sharing the link in the description of the video, just as I did it for the migration tutorial. I already went through this step by step in the most logical order, as you can see. Uh, and what I will be doing today is following this actual guide in the exact same order that it appears here. So you have the option of following the, the guide with me, or you can just go ahead and use this on your own time. So I'm going to actually grab this and move it to my side screen here because again, I want to make sure that I follow it step by step. And now we can go ahead and jump into Unreal. And this is basically a uh, little test level that I created. I have a little um, NPC here. And if I click on simulate, uh, this is, is basically what you would expect. The NPC goes to the point of interest, grabs a random uh, station and starts working. So we want to replicate this behavior with a completely custom NPC class. And what I did is I actually uh, moved, you can see here I have a new folder called new asset and I have a custom NPC class here. And I, uh, I've already done this, so all of this is transferred, but this is going to be the final result. We have this barbarian character that I picked up from Epic's RPG um, sample project. Um, and he has a bunch of different animations and I've transferred some of those into here so we can create our own little station. But this is going to be the end, um, the basically the end goal is to have an NPC that looks just like him. You can see that he has the, uh, the components, all of the code and the NPC controller. Um, so we're going to start from scratch though. So I have, a, I have the same class, but without any of this enhancements right here. This is exactly how I transferred it. Um, and I debated whether I wanted to use this or something a lot nicer looking like some of the Paragon assets, but I decided that this was a lot easier to handle as far as the shaders and complexity. So regardless, the assumption is that for whatever reason, you must use this class and we're going to call it BP custom NPC underscore YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, so what we're going to do first is again, following the guide is we're going to open both classes that we want to, to use. This is the custom class that we're going to use. And now we're going back to our NPC manager folder, blueprints, characters, NPC, BP NPC. And this is again, the core base class that you would use to create your NPCs. Um, so we're going to be copying all the components and all the code. So let me go ahead and close everything again, because I want to make sure that we start from scratch. But the very first thing we do actually, even before copying any of the code is we want to open the skeletons of the NPCs, because chances are that you have your own custom skeleton and we're going to need to modify that. So all the animations work correctly. So if you select the mesh component here, you'll see that you have a skeletal mesh. You can click on this little uh, icon here. It'll take you in the project where the skeleton is. Go ahead and double click and you can open the skeleton. And we want to go to the skeleton tab right here. And it's going to open a separate window. So go ahead and close this. And we're going to do the same thing for the custom uh, NPC that we have here. Open the uh, skeleton and go to the skeleton tab. And now we have both. 
skeletons. As you can see here, you see a skeleton tree and a skeleton tree. And in this case, we are both in a pose and we have the same skeleton. So that is definitely a requirement if you want to retarget animations later on. Uh, the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that we have the correct sockets. And those are going to be used by the stations to spawn the props correctly. So if you look at the NPC uh, skeleton, it has three sockets that, that it comes with. Right here has hand underscore L socket. In other words, a socket for the left hand. It has a socket for the right hand. And it has a socket for the head. And you can see that there's, there's a specific name that we're going to be using. We want to replicate these names so you don't have to make any changes to the stations. It's just going to work. So we're going to create the same sockets on our custom skeleton. And we already have two of those three already made. And I left one specifically that, that we did not do. So if we look at the, at the barbarian right here, notice that we have a right hand socket, hand underscore R socket, and we have the head socket already there. So let's go ahead and create the socket for the left hand. And if you look at, at how to do it, basically you look at um, all of the fingers right here. If you collapse all the fingers, you'll notice that you have hand underscore R, and under this you have a socket called Hand under, hat underscore R socket. So we're going to do the same thing for the left hand. We have it right here. So we have hand underscore L. And what we can do is we can right click and select add socket. And by default, it'll pick the name underscore L and it'll just add socket. I left this as the default name, so there's really nothing else to do. But if for whatever reason you don't get that name, make sure you do select that name. Go ahead and click Save. And now that we have those three sockets, and again, if you don't have it on your skeleton, the right hand is the exact same process. Right click and click on Add Socket to the right bone. We want to do it on the left hand, <clears throat> excuse me, on the right hand and on the head. And that is going to be the first thing. Now we have the three correct sockets, so we can now attach all of the components, including uh, weapons or tools, or even hats. For example, in one of the one of the stations that we pop a little top hat, all of that is going to work, okay? All right. <clears throat> so once we do that, we're going to go ahead and close the skeletons. And now we're ready to start copying the code. And I'm going to move my base uh, NPC to the left and my custom to the right. Um, okay. So the first thing we want to do is we want to um, make sure, let's see here, um, make sure that we verify the collision for these two components. Uh, the capsule component and the mesh component. So what we do is we click on capsule component here on our custom NPC and here. And let's just compare the uh, options here. We see that we have a custom collision on our, on our capsule component. And we're going to basically copy this. So come here and go to collision. And we're just going to select custom. We're going to leave this as pawn, but notice that there's a difference here. We want to make sure that the NPC navigation is on overlap. So we come here and we change collision to query only, and we change the navigation to overlap. And now if we compare both, we can see that there's one more thing. The camera is on overlap. I'm going to go ahead and just copy it as, as well instead of blocking the camera. And uh, we can make this a little bit smaller. It doesn't have to be that big. Notice that I have my capsule half height at 10. So let's go ahead and make the same adjustment here. Okay. <clears throat> go ahead and click Compile and Save. And now if we select the mesh, we also have collision on the mesh here. And it's another custom collision. So we're going to go ahead and do the same thing. 
come to the mesh here. We change it to custom and it's going to be collision enabled. Sorry, this is going to be a uh, query only. And we want to basically ignore everything except collision with static and world dynamic. So click on ignore everything and only have collision with static and world dynamic. And the object type is world static. Click save. And here we go. So now the collision of both of these components is completed. And now we have the skeletons done correctly. All right. Now we're going to go ahead and copy the interaction component that you see right here. This is going to be the component that the MPC uses to feel uh, around itself and to interact with objects, including stations and other MPCs. So all you need to do is right click here, click on copy, come to your custom MPC, select the mesh, paste, and you have the component here. And we want to do the same thing for the hot component. So click on copy and the same thing, click on paste. Notice that they appear completely messed up here and that's fine. We just need to adjust it. So we are going to parent both of these components and put them under the mesh, just like you see here. And now we're going to compile and save and we want to change the location and rotation of these components to match here. So an easy way of doing that is if you select the component here and you go all the way up, you can actually right click on location, click on copy. And then when you come here and you select the same component, you can actually click on right click and say paste. And we're going to do the same thing for the rotation. Notice that it's looking way better. And of course, you can always adjust this later on. So don't feel like it has to be that way. That's just a starting point. We're going to do the same thing for the HUD. Location. Paste. And rotation. There we go. And there's one more thing for the HUD. And that is that we have to, to parent it to the head socket that we created earlier. So notice that the HUD right here has a parent socket called head socket. We're going to do the exact same thing here. So click on the icon here and you can start typing head and we're going to pick head socket and we're going to compile and save. And notice now that the HUD is now attached to the head and rotate it with the head because this guy's animation is looking downwards. This is why this is looking this way. Now we're going to make a further adjustment. This looks like it's a little bit to the front. So feel free to grab the component and just slide it back a little bit. Again, you can, you can adjust the height and the location. Doesn't really matter. And we're going to go ahead and click on click and save. Okay. The same thing if you if you need to readjust the um, interaction trigger, you can go ahead and do that. I'm going to make this a little bit more to the front because he has such a wide stance on his feet, but we can always adjust this later. Another thing we want to make sure is that we verify that the collision is the same for the for the interaction trigger. Uh, it should be the same, but always good to uh, double check. So we come here and we look at uh, the interaction trigger collision and we compare it to the collision settings here. And let's make sure that they are exactly the same. Query only NPC navigation. Query only NPC navigation and everything is an overlap. Just like here. Great. So we've done that. So we have now copied and configured both of those components correctly. And now, after we do that, we want to add the NPC controller component, as you can see right here. That's very simple, though. Simply click on Add Component and type NPC Controller. And you can see it right here is going to be the top one, Comp NPC Controller. You're going to see it right there. Compile and save. Okay. Um, and I'm looking, I want to make sure that I follow the exact same order as the guide. <laughs> so as I'm talking here, I'm going back and checking the order because I want things to match exactly. 
Now we want to add a, a interface to our MPC and the interface is called BPI NPC HUD. This is going to be the interface that we use to change some properties of the HUD when we are on the station. And to do that, all we need to do is go back to our custom NPC, click on class settings and under interfaces here, you can click on the little add button and start typing BPI. And you can see there's several here. We're going to use NPC HUD. Click on compile and save. And if we go back and we compare it, make sure that it's the exact same one. Okay. All right. Great. I think we're done. Now we're going to start copying the actual code. So go back to the NPC uh, uh, class here. Click on event graph and open the event graph. We're going to be copying all of these nodes in a specific order. And we go to our custom NPC. We go to the event graph. And in this case, there's nothing. Most likely, you're going to have a bunch of code for your own class. So obviously, make sure that you copy things appropriately. And the very first thing we'll copy is going to be the sequence here under the begin play. So go ahead and select these nodes. Control C. Go back here. Control um, v and we can connect this and before we compile if we compile we're going to get a bunch of errors so do not compile go back to this and we're going to copy all of these custom events so select everything here control c go back here control v and you have it right here and again we don't want to compile we're going to get a bunch of errors we need to correct certain things here so the first thing we'll do is we're going to open hud this uh, graph here, and we're going to create a bunch of these variables that have been copied but not created. And the easiest way to do that is if you if you right click on a variable, you'll see that there's an option called create variable, and then it gives you the name. We're going to do exactly that. That way we don't have to like delete it and create something else. Everything just works exactly the same. So we're going to keep moving here. We're going to look for other variables. And you can see that we have a hot offset variable. So the same thing, right click, create variable. And then we have this uh, event here and we have this little red line. And basically that means that this is, the Unreal is not recognizing this event. It's saying, hey, this is invalid. So all we're going to do is right click on the node and click refresh node. And notice that the, that the connection is now uh, white. That means that it recognizes it. We check everything here. And looks great. Nothing else to do here. And now we can move on to the next uh, location, which is set physical animation. And we're going to do the exact same thing here. Notice that there are some variables. We're going to simply create them. And we're going to create this variable as well. And everything seems great. Okay. Now we're going to go back. And we're going to open event set NPC HUD right here. And the same thing, create the variable, create the variable and refresh this node that you see right here. And we can quickly scan, make sure that everything looks correct here. If you see anything in gray, that means that something wasn't created correctly. We go back here, set HUD location. Notice that we have now already added a node that references that uh, uh, blueprint interface. That's why we did things in the specific order. Create this variable here, create this variable here, and everything else looks correct. And now the last one, we open here and we look and everything looks correct. So we can go ahead and click compile and save and notice that there are no errors. There is one thing that we want to make sure that we do, though, is we want to make sure that the defaults for these variables is correct. So if we click on physical and in bone, we actually have a default variable here and it's called spine 01. So go ahead and copy that. Control C, Control V, compile and save. And then if we go back here to a lot of these uh, variables, reset location by default is false and can move camera by default is true. We want to make sure that we do that. So can move HUD. We're going to make this true by default. Again, 
want to make sure that when we create variables, the default values are the same. That way, everything works as expected. Okay, now I'm going back to the guide here, making sure that I didn't miss anything. Now we want to copy the remaining code, which is this uh, section right here, including tick. So all we can do is simply copy all of this. So we see it here. Control C. We go to our custom NPC now. Control V. And we're going to follow basically the same principle, right? We have a bunch of variables that have to be created. So ahead, you can go ahead and right click on overlapped actor. Create variable. Everything looks good here. Oops. NPC controller also needs to be created. And we see that all, everything looks correct here. And let's open this uh, graph under event tick and just double check everything looks correct here. So just to verify, click on compile, save, and notice that again, no errors, no compilation errors. If you do things in a different order, you may get some errors, which is exactly why I have this specific order in mind when copying the code. So please do follow the, the order and you will you will have a very smooth uh, transition. All right, uh, now we need to add a few additional settings. Uh, the first thing is we want to select the top level here or click on class defaults either way and go into the search here and type tag. And in this case, this, uh, this class was originally a player in another project. We want to add the tag NPC, all caps, Make sure that you spell it correctly. Otherwise, certain blueprints will not recognize this as an NPC. So again, click on class defaults, search for tag, and you can click on the little plus sign and add a tag called NPC. Since we're already here, we're going to use the same search and we're going to type AI controller. And right now the AI controller is this default AI controller. We want to change this to the NPC controller. So go ahead and click on the little arrow here and select BP NPC controller underscore crowd. And this is the NPC controller that we're using. We're using the crowd manager uh, for the NPCs that gives it a lot better uh, functionality when it comes to navigating with a bunch of different NPCs in a crowded space. It's a little bit more expensive, but definitely better. So AI controller class, NPC controller crowd. And finally, we want to search for auto possess. And notice that the NPC will be auto possessed by AI when it's placed in the world. We also want the, the, the NPC to be auto possessed when it's spawned because we have NPC spawners in the world, right? So select here under the arrow placed in world or spawned. If you don't do that, if you spawn this NPC at runtime, it won't do anything. It'll just stay there idly. So very important that you make this change here and everything should now work. All right. That is pretty much it, guys. We have our custom NPC having all of the different components. We have the HUD here attached to the head. We have all of the code, hopefully uh, working correctly. So if we were to drag this guy, let's go back to our custom NPC, and this is the one we created. We drag him to a level here, and we are going to assign the same profile. So assign it a profile. I'm going to use the same profile that this guy has, and the profile is going to be, let's see, just make sure, showcase POI1. I'm going to make this guy inactive. So click on the component controller. And it's going to choose the same one, showcase POI1. If we click on simulate, notice that the guy is already automatically working. But what happens is when he gets to the station, notice that nothing happens. We have the, the, the prop that actually spawned and attached to the right hand. So the socket name is correct, but nothing is happening. And that makes sense. The reason that nothing is happening is because the animation montage assigned to the station has a different skeleton than our custom NPC. 
Therefore, the, M the NPC is trying to play the animation, but nothing is happening because the animation montage is attached to an animation asset, which in turn is attached to a skeleton. So this is where we have two different options here. We can either create a, a station from scratch by using an animation that is already um, used with this skeleton, or we can grab a default animation that comes with the NPC manager and retarget it to our custom skeleton, and then we can use it that way. And we're actually going to use both. I want to show you how to do both. The first thing is we are going to assume that you have other animations that came for this specific skeleton. So if I click on new asset here, epic content, character, barbarous, animations, uh, we have a few animations here, uh, but there's one specifically, and I'm going to delete this. This is from a previous one here. Go ahead and delete this. Uh, sword cheer. Kind of this weird, and I don't know why he keeps shaking his head, but this is this is coming from the end from from the epic uh, project. But I want to create a station where the NPC just has this like cheer movement, right? Great. So we're going to do that. We can we can close this by the way. So what we're going to do is before we do this, we want to create a brand new station, and we're going to call it. Uh, let's call it my custom station, but you know what? Let's call it something else in this case. Sword cheers the animation that we want to use. So if we go back to the NPC manager, blueprints, stations, remember always go back to the base class and we're going to create a child blueprint of the base class. And let's call this mm, barbarian cheer. Okay, and let's move it to the top folder again, just to keep things organized. Barbarian cheer, we're going to open this blueprint and we're going to be making changes here. So now let's go back to our animation that we want to use. So sorry, we're kind of jumping back and forth here. And we wanted to use this sword cheer animation. Okay, and the first thing we'll do is we want to create an animation montage. So right here on the content folder, right click, go to create, create anim montage. And we can name it AM Barbarian Shear. And if we open this asset, it's exactly what you would expect. It's just an animation montage with just one animation clip, this guy doing his little uh, cheer movement. And that is the animation montage that we will use in our new station. But we also want to use, we want to create a separate animation asset that is only going to have one frame. And that is going to be the pose that we're going to use to visualize what the station looks like. So for example, this station here, you can see that it has this uh, montage or animation that looks like the guy is uh, on a table sitting here. This one has this guy sitting. So we want to accomplish the same visual effect. That way, when you're when you're putting the station on your level, you know exactly what that animation looks like. So the way we do that is very simple. When we open our animation asset here, for example, this animation cheer, if I go down here and stop the animation from playing, I can grab this little scrubber and I can move it right here. So what we want to do is let's pick a pose that is representative of this station. I like this right here. It can be literally anything you want, but I'm gonna choose this one here. And, and then what you want to do is you want to come up here and, and select create asset, create animation, and we want to use the current pose. So we're actually creating a new animation with one frame. Select it, and it's going to ask you the name and the location. So we want to uh, select the same location, Barbarous Animation, and let's, um, let's see, uh, let's call this Station Pose Barbarian Cheer. You can name it whatever you want, but I like to prefix it with Station Pose so it's easy to add. And as you can see now, it's literally one frame. 
click on save and now if we come back to the to the uh, station here which we already had open barbarian cheer now what we can do is we can come down here to station options regular animations and in this case it's going to be a loop it's going to be cheering constantly you can click on the plus sign here and when you come down here you can see all of the animation montages that we've created so it's going to be barbarian barbarian cheer and you can select it here and that's going to be the animation montage so now when the when the npc comes here he'll be playing this animation montage which should work but we still have the old skeleton here in this t pose or in this a pose and we want to make sure that we change that so we did this now we want to change the post mesh right here under general settings and the post mesh is going to be changed to the custom skeleton and in this case is going to be this one notice that the skeleton has now changed see that to better suit our custom npc and now we select our pose skeleton here and we're going to do the same thing we're going to change the skeletal mesh to the correct mesh and under anim to play we are going to select the animation that we created for the barbarian and that is going to be station pose barbarian cheer whatever you named it make sure that you pick it and now you see that we have when we compile and save not only the correct animation montage but we have the correct skeleton and the pose that is telling us exactly what's going to happen when we drop the station in our level so let's do this let's grab all of our stations here we want to move them out of the way and now let's come back to our stations here blueprints stations barbarian cheer and if we drop this guy right here we see that he has the correct stance and um, skeleton so we can click on our poi go all the way down to the utilities populate elements categorize stations and now if we click on play he's coming very very slowly <laughs> you can see that now he is using the station and he's going to be looping uh, using our animation very very nice so this is the way that you would create a new station using an animation that is targeted to your own custom skeleton most likely this is what you're going to do so you're going to be creating a bunch of stations like this and uh, let's make sure that they're visible you can come to the general settings here and untick area hidden and post hidden that way when you click on simulate you can still see it and you can see this guy actually coming here it's a lot easier to see uh, visually but now there's the other use case okay that's great what if you wanted to use one of the many animations that come with the npc manager and that's quite fair now i do want to mention that all of the animations that come here by default were made by me in blender so they're by no means professional very nice they're just placeholder animations so most likely you're going to have other animations that either you made yourself or you bought from the marketplace but if those animations are still targeted to the default mannequin skeleton this process will be exactly the same that's the reason why i did it this way right the default skeleton all of the assets if you go to, uh, if you get any animation in the marketplace they're all going to be targeted to the skeleton in this case if you have a custom skeleton you need to retarget the animations there so let's go ahead and do that now the first thing we want to do is just like earlier before we want to open both skeletons we want to make sure that we can retarget them correctly so that's the first thing so if we go to our customs uh, animation uh, sorry our custom npc here and we select the mesh we click on the skeletal mesh and we open it here we go to the skeleton tab and we can close this and we're going to do the same thing for our npc so if we can click on our bp npc click on our mesh click on the uh, skeletal mesh open it go to the skeleton tab now we have both skeletons open this one and this one now look uh we have a little tab called retarget manager 
So go ahead and do that for both. And for both, you want to come down here under Setup Rig and select Humanoid Rig. That's the only one that you have available, uh, but you may create other rigs as well. So all you need to do is make sure that you select the same rig for both and make sure that obviously the skeletons match and they're in the same pose. In this case, this guy's already in the A pose and it has all of the same names for the bones. If this is not the case though, you will have to manually come here and assign the correct bone to all of these um, bones here. So that's a little bit more involved and you can find tutorials online or on YouTube. I'm not gonna go through that. Just know that all of these targets need to be exactly the same and make sure that both the both skeletons have the humanoid rig targeted, okay? That's important, otherwise the next step is not going to work. Now we can go back to our MPC manager folder, go under animations and we can choose any animations that we want here to retarget to our custom MPC. And in the example, I use the talk animation, so I'm gonna do the same thing here just for consistency. So we're going to target the animation called Anim Talk 1, and it's just gonna be this little animation here. He just loops, does this little uh, thing with his hands, and does that. All we would need to do here is right click on the actual animation, go to Retarget Anim Assets, and select Duplicate Anim Asset and Retarget. And right here, you're gonna see this window and it's going to ask you, select the skeleton that you want to use to retarget the animation. Go ahead and select your custom NPC skeleton. Notice on the preview window that they look like they're in the exact same pose. Click on Retarget. And you're going to have a brand new animation at the root folder under Content that if I open, is now targeted to our custom NPC. Doesn't look as good because again, not a very good animation, but the point still stands. We have our custom skeleton now using our animation. Guess what? We're going to do the exact same thing as we did before. So we're gonna go a little bit quicker here for uh, creating a new station. We're going to grab a pose that we, that we think is good that represents the NPC talking. So I'm gonna kind of use this one here. Yeah, let's just use kind of this one. Create asset, create animation asset, current pose, and we're gonna keep it at the very top level. Station pose, we're gonna call this barbarian talk. Click on okay. We can save and go back and we can close this. And notice that now we have another animation, barbarian talk. And now on Anim Talk 1, right click, create, create Anim Montage, AM Barbarian underscore talk. Now we have the three assets that we need to create a brand new station. And now we can go to NPC Manager, Blueprints, Stations, Base Class, right click, Create Child Blueprint, Barbarian talk. We're going to move this to the top folder and I'm going a little faster here. So um, if, if it's going too fast, feel free to stop the video or uh, look at the documentation, but it's basically the same process as before. So we're going to open Barbarian talk. That's our new one here. We are going to change the pose uh, mesh to the Barbarian. We're going to, to choose pose skeleton and we're going to change this again to the Barbarian. The anim to play is going to be barbarian, sorry, uh, station pose, barbarian talk. You can see that we've changed it here. And now if we go to the top level here and we go under station, under regular animations, we're going to select loop animations and we're going to select barbarian talk. That's the one we selected. Compile and save. And if we come back here and we drag this guy here, let's go ahead and do the same thing here and deselect area hidden and post hidden so we can actually see it. Make sure that the POI is aware that there's a new station, same thing. Populate elements, categorize stations. And just for fun, we can grab our 
custom NPC and we want to debug its routine. That way we can see exactly what's happening. We can click on simulate and now we see that this guy has come here and is playing the uh, talk animation as expected. So, we, so the animation has been retargeted to the skeleton. You can see that our NPC is now using the talk uh, animation on the uh, station and as soon as this is done he's going to be assigned a different station and this animation was not retargeted but was currently for that specific skeleton and that is pretty much it guys we've covered how to create our, our custom NPC and we migrated all of our components after we did that and we made sure that it worked we created a station from scratch by using an, anim an animation that was already part of the skeleton. And finally, we retargeted another animation and created a station from scratch doing that. If you have any animations from the marketplace, most likely they will be targeted to a mannequin skeleton. So following the steps here that we did last should be able to create the animations for your NPC correctly. And if we go back to our uh, PowerPoint here, I think we did everything. We created the NPC class. We transferred all of the information. We created a new station by using a custom animation. And finally, we did the retarget here. Hopefully, this was easy to follow. Again, uh, if you have any questions, here's my support email. You can email me here directly and I can help you. You can join our Discord. I'm going to leave a link in the description below. Join our, our Discord and DM me directly or post on the channel if you have questions or support. It's also a really cool uh, community. So even if you have no questions, I still encourage you to join and participate. And finally, there will be a link to the written guide in this video. So feel free to click on the link directly and follow along if that's easier for you. All right, guys, hopefully this was useful for you and you were able to follow up. Thank you guys so much, and I'll talk to you in the next video.